Hello YouTube, it is Lucid Alvar here today with another video and today we're actually going to be talking about the Preacher Cult. Now today, the Preacher Cult is something that we actually don't know that much about. So this is more in the speculation area, but it is still kind of lore. We still cover some lore stuff, but without further ado, let's get straight into this video. So first let's start off with pretty much the basic background information that we can actually get on this cult now like i said before this cult we don't really know that much about them or anything more of their history but we can kind of connect a little bit of dots to give us a little bit of lore and see where where we actually are with like what their story really is so now the nature cult is responsible for the disappearance of a hundred of travelers this is found on a wanted poster for the preacher who is the leader of the cult which is kind of weird because the preacher actually doesn't have a name and none of the actual like npcs have a name which is kind of a little bit weird to me but maybe you know that that's a little side thing but they pray to the moon but kenshi is a moon like the landmass that we play on the game that we call kenshi like the little landmass that we play on is a moon so it might be the moon in front of us and not actually kenshi or they think that planet in the sky is actually like a moon for some reason so <laughs> I, I actually do not know on where, like, why they think this, but they could believe that Kenshi, like, the landmass that we play on is actually a planet and not a moon, which I guess, like, you know, is a, is a common mi misconception because, you know, um, history isn't really taught in Kenshi, so their prayers are also weird with what they kind of say. So the first prayer is, moon's almighty, make it rain, flesh for the birds and blood for the sands. Take what is dirt and purify the lands. Rain for the harvest blood. Rain for the harvest blood for the sands. Sorry, I messed it up a little bit. But that is actually kind of weird. And let's get into their other uh, chant before we go into it a little bit more. Blood in the dirt. Give us grain. Moons almighty. Make it rain. So as you can see, these guys have bars. No, I'm just playing. But these guys are, are praying to the moon. And they're actually playing, praying for the flesh for the birds and blood for the sands which i mean i'm not gonna get super into religion right here but you know it does sound like a little bit of like you know some of the um rituals that are performed in the church with for catholics where you know you, you eat the body of christ and you drink his blood type of thing it, th there's some correlation that you can draw there but other than that there really isn't that much to go off here but you could see that they actually play, pray to the moon and they believe in more of a like you know a, like kind of a simple life and they don't really believe in like oh we needed to do this we need to do that they believe in that the moon gives their crops pretty much grain or they get grain and shit and you know they get all that from pretty much the moon and that's why they pray to it so it's kind of um it's kind of weird in in a sense but so the moon cleaver that is in possession of the preacher is actually a may 2 version of the moon cleaver that was made by cross so this is this poses a really interesting thing and a really interesting like like entire area of their lore because for some reason they have a plus 95 mechanic relation for some odd reason and it could be so this is mainly what i think is that the fact that everything that they re they do they say and they want requires blood the skeletons don't have blood they have oil so like to them it's like well what use are skeletons to us like we don't have no quarrel with them so Pretty much, they probably just let the skeletons do whatever they want. I mean, not like they probably had much choice back then, but even now, they probably just don't even fuck with them at all. You know, like, they just, they're just chill with them, I guess. But the interesting thing is the plus 95 mechanic relation. That means that for some reason, Catlon had to be in, you know, in discussions with them, like, in general. So, you know, if we want to go a little bit into the theory hole, it is possible that Catlon could have known the first preacher... And probably been like, hey, you're a pretty cool dude. You know, you don't want to kill us. You just want to farm, you know, plants and you think this and this. Um, Here, you know, like have this. And let's not rule out the flack that, you know, Catlon could have done that for him. Because Catlon actually has a May 2 falling son, if I remember correctly. And, you know, just him getting his hands on these type of weapons actually isn't that hard for him. And, I mean, he's been around for the longest. So he obviously would have probably, you know had a way to get it and he was the leader of the second empire very early on so he, he most likely had a had a hand in this but back out of the theory home so 
there's two interesting things that I'm going to put on the screen right here is this map. So there's two interesting things that I want to talk about. So before I do, this map was made by Safa. He um he made this map and, you know, he works with me on these videos. So hopefully you guys can, you know, comment down saying thank you to Safa. But, you know, like huge thank you to you for helping me out with this video. But without further ado, so blue is controlled by the UC. Purple is Tech Hunters. Red is the Preacher Cult. Pink is the trade route for the UC. Orange area is where people from the UC are going missing. So the interesting, very, very, very interesting thing is there is no cult patrols here, like at all. There's no cult patrols, nothing right there. So it's kind of weird that they're going missing there and they're blaming the cult because the cult doesn't seem like they go out and hunt people. If you come close to a territory, they will kill you. But it doesn't look like they're sending people out to come back in if like you guys get what I'm saying. And the second thing is they don't attack the Reavers and also don't attack Grass Bandits for some odd, odd reason. They just don't, which is, um, I, don't, I really don't know how to explain that. But honestly, I think the UC, since they're so, um, you know, pretty much like pro-slavery, they just let the Reavers and the Grass Bandits slide, especially the Reavers, because the Reavers are heavy, heavy slavers. So that's possible right there. But for the Grass Bandits to not be attacked, it's kind of weird. It could have something to do with their name, and maybe they um they think that they're farmers or something. You know, farmers aren't the aren't the brightest tool in the sh <clears throat> in the shed in this game. But you know, this is this is like interesting. You know, like there are actually no cold patrols, and it's more of a you walk up to their front door, you get killed type of thing. You know, and that that's pretty much all we have on them. So pretty much their history is still a little bit loosely around. I mean, this is everything that we could probably tie into it. But other than that, hopefully you guys have a nice day and have a nice week. Remember to leave a like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. I have a Discord down in the link below if you guys do want to join. Um, but yeah, later.